Welcome everyone. This is the Jenkins Platform Special Interest Group. I'm Mark Waite, joined by Jim Crawley. Thanks very much, Jim, for being here. And we're going to uh, talk topics. I want to share my screen and let's look at the agenda. Okay, so here we go. Oops, wrong agenda. This one right here. So Jim, can you see that all right? Yeah, I can see it perfectly. Excellent, thank you. So open, we'll review open action items. Um, I'm not expecting Oleg Nanashev to join us. He's been ill this past week, not feeling well. And, but renaming agent Docker images and Google Summer of Code projects. I'll give a brief report on that. Uh, then we've got a, a question from a submitter or a question or a statement of a project that's in progress that we'll talk about related to rework of the agent projects. Um, then Jim, you've got a topic on reducing yep. the workload for publishing images and a second topic on how Git LFS is installed in Docker files. Yep. Great, thank you. Any other topics you wanted to add, Jim? Uh, no, that's it. Uh, do you have uh, any recap from the uh, conference you went to? Any, anything good to share? Oh, oh, that's a that's a good one to. Yeah, let's see. So Fosdem notes and comments. Yeah, that's a good one to 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 include in the in the list. It won't do any harm, and let's put it there at the end. Good, thanks. Yeah. All right. Okay. So let's go over action items. Oh, any anything else, Jim? No, that that was it. That's the only thing I could think of, actually. Okay. Great. So I've still got the open action item. Hang my head in shame. Open a Jenkins enhancement proposal uh, for Docker operating system support rules. Sorry. Uh, likewise for Oleg um, on the Windows support policy. The one that has had some what I call progress and non-progress is we've changed blocking modes on the uh, code signing. Instead of being blocked on finding a vendor, we've got a vendor. What we're now trying to work through is the legal, legal entity definition things to allow them to issue a signing certificate to what is not a corporation and not a person. So awesome. there's certainly organizations that have done this before, but they're working through legal discussions and no, because it's involving lawyers, I don't know when it will complete. It's just mm -hmm. ongoing. So next topic, we'll, we'll skip this one. There's, a, there's an ongoing question. Can we do more to get rid of the use of the deprecated term slaves inside the Jenkins Jenkins environments, and one is that the Docker agent, Docker images, actually use the word slave in their name. Uh, we'll discuss that in another session. Glad to note that there are Google Summer of Code 2020 project ideas that are being run from inside the platform special interest group. Uh, that includes the Git plug, two Git plugin project ideas, and several others. Uh, Git the Google Summer of Code 2020 timeline. We are now inside the period where we have submitted our application to the Google Summer of Code project. And the, we're hoping to hear, and the timeline says their answer will come back in a relatively few weeks. Uh, the re recording of the Google Summer of Code team meeting for the Jenkins project from just a few days ago includes a review of the timeline as presented by Oleg Nanashev. So this looks really good, and it looks like we're gonna have an even better Google Summer of Code this year than we did last year. Awesome. Now the next topic on the list, this one was a, a rework item that is just here, is included in this list for information. A user uh, has submitted the following, and I'm gonna increase the size of this so that we can read it together. So they're using Docker JNLP slave and SSH slave and the Docker slave image, and they need it with newer versions of OpenJDK, but those newer versions of OpenJDK are not yet included in those base images. Mm. And he's proposing a significant rework of the structure of the projects to allow easier introduction of new images and to adapt more readily 
uh, Oleg said, hey, this, is, this looks good to him and gave some initial warnings on, hey, it might be, this might be a problem in these areas, but it's a really great thing to be doing. And it's been mentioned in, in other pull requests that are open. So there's some progress there. I haven't seen much recently on the project. So um, we're, we're making prog progress. I think the platform SIG will need this work as well because as we consider, we probably will want to consider adding agents for PowerPC, for S390, mm -hmm. et cetera. So that's just a, a for everybody's information. Jim, any questions that you had there? No, I actually haven't uh, took a look at this PR. Uh, it'd be interesting to see what the rework actually entails. Um, so right now, this currently doesn't affect the, the main repository, right? This is just the Docker slave and Docker agents um, repositories, right? Correct, that's right. Okay. So it is, this is just touching agents. And, mm -hmm. and, but I think, I think you've got a good point that it's likely worth it as we're considering alternatives for the, the main Docker repository. Should we look at the ideas that are involved here and evaluate them? Hey, would this, would this help the main repositories build processes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What well, one thing I do have to know um, is maybe it was a month ago. Uh, and I know he mentions Alpine a couple of times. Um, uh, open JDK, uh, not docs, but you know, just the regular Open JDK, uh, did put out a beta image, or may maybe a beta release. I don't think it got yet into an image of uh, native muscle support. So it would be the Alpine images uh, instead oh, of wow. using uh, okay, so libgc. So so let me make a note of that. That's that's news that I wasn't aware of. So Jim noted that. The Open JDK project mm -hmm. has uh, delivered a pre-release of Muscle C library support in Open JDK. Yeah, and we, we had talks at Adopt uh, to pull that in uh, into our new images. Uh, as you know, like I think it's for Java 14. Uh, I want to say that. Um, ah, ah, okay. So it's not, they didn't do it for JDK 8 or 11, but mm -hmm. rather for the new cutting edge. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, so it might not be exactly helpful for you guys right now, but uh, it was definitely something uh, I took note of because um, Adopt did get blocked in terms of pushing Alpine images to the official repository because we were using uh, the, well, one of the reasons uh, due to using uh, libgc you know, on Alpine instead of using right. Muscle. And then uh, we didn't have enough testing apparently at the time, but we're fixing that. Yeah, and so dlibc is not the native, uh, nope. the native C library on Alpine, right? They use Muscle as the native library. Yes. Yes, yeah, so you have to go out of your way, and it's it's pretty intensive to go out of your way to thus reverse all that and get libg uh, or uh, g libc uh, back onto it. Great. All right. Um, Thank you. Thanks very much. Yeah, it might not be helpful, but I'll I'll, I'll find the link for you guys and post it up in uh, the agenda, uh, so that way you at least can at least look at it. Thank you. Thanks. Yep. Yeah. All right, I think we're on to our next topic then. Ideas for reducing workload for publishing images. Jim, can you give for people like me, I don't know the details of the image publishing process. So tell the, tell, shall the share the story with us. I'll take some notes. Mm -hmm. I'm actually gonna mute so that my keyboard is not, is not terribly Clack distracted. Okay, um, I, I didn't think it was bad by, by the way, but um, so, since I'm still new to the project, it might not be 100% coverage of the whole build process, but for what I've done, and I, I, I should have posted the PR link, uh, I can, I can, I can, I can uh, push that to you on uh, Glitter uh, if you want to take a look at that eventually. Um, but what happens is when, when we trigger a build, and I'm pretty sure it's a manual process, so, so Daniel Beck or uh, whoever's in charge of the builds, I, I'm not sure who those people are, 
I have to kick it off. Uh, what happens is it grabs the last 30. Uh, I think our production grabs the last 30 uh, releases of Jenkins on the experimental build. So like the multi-arch, uh, I think it grabs the last 20, but it grabs a significant amount of uh, the Jenkins builds. And what it does, it basically loops through um, and starts building images. Uh, but before it pushes uh, the images, it checks if the tags already exist up in Docker Hub. If they do, uh, they do not push them, assuming that um, the images they just built are the exact same as the images up in Docker Hub. Uh, after that's done, uh, they go ahead and start uh, making more tags in terms of like, okay, hey, uh, this is an LTS image uh, for Debian, uh, you know, yada, yada, yada. Uh, and then they start making the uh, multi-arch uh, manifests um, and push them up. Um, the, the, it basically, I guess what Daniel uh, Beck was saying was um, it takes a, a lot of time just to push out, um, you know, a update to a certain variant. So uh, if we need to update just Debian, um, it takes a lot of time because there's no way to control it right now via the pipeline uh, that we have set, uh, you guys have set up um, on like, hey, I just want to rebuild Debian or I just want to rebuild Alpine or CentOS. There's, there's no way to do that. Uh, it's literally, hey, grab the last 30 releases and then go through every single variant that you guys support, um, which is in very intensive. Um, so he was saying that um, what he wanted was a quicker way to kind of streamline, uh, streamline building. Um, and actually my PR actually addresses a lot of the, the issues that he brought up um in uh, the glitter chat um but that's kind of the gist of how it works right now uh and some of the downfalls of it and i can get you that pr right now um if you want to take at least a little look at the um the um uh, the synopsis of it uh, let me just do you want me to send it on glitter or do you want me to add it to the google doc for you I think you're uh, muted, Mark, by the way. Unmute there. Uh, either is either is great. So if you want to put it right in the meeting notes, that's probably simpler. If okay. whatever works for you. Yeah, uh, I just uh, I just I just put it down. So uh, perfect. All right. Because I wanted to open that up and take a look at it together. It's a good excuse for us to look at it. Yeah, uh, I know the the uh, FOSDOM uh, kind of I, I wanted to get this in front of you guys two weeks ago, or I guess it would have been four weeks ago, whatever it is. Uh, but now it's a really good opportunity. I was hoping Oleg would have been here because he, he was the one uh, also talking with Daniel Beck and also Slide actually was too uh, about the whole build. Um, so some of the major changes I went through is uh, currently you guys uh, are using the, um, the manifest tool. Uh, the manifest tool to build um, manifests for Docker uh, was made, uh, I think actually by an IBMer. Uh, but what happened, it was made uh, before a Docker, uh, Docker manifest, the command actually got integrated into Docker. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it's Docker manifest is still in experimental. Um, it's still like in kind of like a technical beta, uh, but it's what we use internally. It's what a lot of companies actually use to build uh, manifests. Um, manifest, uh, yeah, I guess that's a plural. Um, so what I did was I swapped to Docker manifest instead of the manifest tool. A, that gives us a little better um, use of things uh, in terms of it's just native Docker. We don't need a whole another tool. Uh, and it gives us some cool extra things we can do uh, later on in terms of instead of like hitting Docker's API, uh, we can just hit Docker's uh, command line uh, and parse out the information we need. Uh, where the API usually changes a lot um, and we're actually seeing that in adopt um, while the docker manifest should always roughly point to the same you know endpoint whatever they change it to should roughly give you the same output um, okay so, so uh, forgive my ignorance a docker mm -hmm. manifest is a is some sort of a list of the contents of a docker file or give me a basic tutorial yep. I, i'm sorry i'm not even familiar nope. with what a docker nope. manifest is it's all good. Uh, it's, it's very simple. Uh, you, Brittany, hit it right on the money there. 
it's basically a meta file um, that basically says, hey, here, so for one of the manifests you guys have is LTS, right? For LTS, right, you might be producing a S390 image, you might be pushing like a, a ARM, a AMD64, yada, 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 right? Uh, what it does is you basically say, hey, I wanna have one tag called LTS, right? And in this LTS tag, I want, if someone pulls for S390, I want it to point to this specific image. If someone pulls for AMD64, point to this specific image. So when what happens in reality is when I do a Docker pull Jenkins uh, LTS, it goes up and hits the Docker API. It looks at what arch I'm running and then basically points me to the right image uh, and pulls down that specific arch's image. Um, this is very helpful because, you know, you don't need to worry about, hey, let me pull from S390, Jenkins, and blah, blah, blah. It's just one universal image. Uh, image. And because very important, at least in IBM, where we are doing constant builds on any type of arch we can get our hands on, uh, any server we get our hands on, right? So we don't want to have to currently, you know, always have like some sort of if statement saying, hey, if this arch, if this arch, pull this image. We just want to right. pull from one image. Okay. Well, that's all it is. Thank you. Thank that. So that that means that's why, for instance, even in my world where I don't have access to S three ninety, but I do have access to ARM boxes, for instance. So mm -hmm. this would allow me to say, Docker run, uh, Jenkins slash Jenkins colon LTS on my ARM box, and it would mm -hmm. automatically detect. Oh, you're on ARM. I need to go get the ARM image instead of the x sixty four image. Yep. And then Thank if you. some some reason they they didn't put the uh, push the arm image in the manifest um it would basically come back saying hey no uh no image for that platform found um so you can see that uh, like um in official images a lot of official images go through the docker uh, library's build pipeline which is the jenkins server that has access to all the arches and then thus gets you you know hey a manifest file but okay. some of them don't build for arm so if you go to like pull hey like docker Ubuntu, you know, 16.04, right? Uh, it might not have been built for ARM, uh, and it'll give you that little error message saying, hey, no image found for that platform. Got it. Okay, yeah. thank you. Sorry for the long trip on Docker Manifest. Continue. No, no, it's good. It's good background info. All right, so we basically just for that whole kind of uh, bullet note is switching to Docker Manifest uh, instead of having this whole another tool, uh, legacy tool even. Um, the next major uh, update is parallel builds. Um, so what I did is I split up all the builds um, into, I basically split it into three stages. Uh, the, the published images, uh, published tags, and published uh, manifests. Uh, these three different scripts uh, that you could trigger at different points or just trigger one if you wanted. Um, and basically they do as the name kind of applies, public, uh, published images, uh, builds the images and pushes them to uh, Docker Hub, uh, publish tags, does all the tagging mechanisms. Uh, so, hey, let me tag this image. Like, let me tag Debian ones as LTS. Let me tag uh, whatever latest image is pointing to. Um, and basically just generating all these tags. Um, and then for Docker manifest, we actually pull all those tags and pull all those images, build the manifest, and pushes the manifest files up. Um, but I did that on a way where, um, Hey, if you if you want to build, you know, if you have all these different variants like Debian, Debian Slim, Alpine, right? They all can build at the exact same time. The colossal script that you guys kind of were using before, which is going, it was one for loop, basically going through all the different possibilities uh, and wasn't paralyzed at all. Um, so you know, this provides speed upgrades and also kind of going back to Daniel Beck's point, it was like, hey, I really just want to do an update or security update for Debian. Uh, I don't really care about Slim. I don't really care about these ones because they never were affected by the security patch. It's just Debian. I just want to build just Debian. How can we do that? Uh, this would solve that. Okay, now this, so did your, you had mentioned that the the previous build or the current build process is collecting the past 20 or 30 releases. Is this yes. still doing that? Yes, I kept it that way uh, oh, okay. for easier integration. But in in my script, I broke it up where you can actually pass in the version. Oh. Uh, yeah, so uh, what it does actually is go collect 20 versions, and that's the only thing it's looping over, right? You you pass in, hey, I want to build for S390. I want to build for Debian. 
and I want to, you know, do, you know, whatever the last parameter is. And then it basically loops over the versions, passing them in. It's very easy to just modify it slightly or just have a make command where it, it will pass in a certain version and you can just do it for that specific one. Um, Great. Yeah. So ideally what uh, Alex and, um, you know, Oleg and Daniel and I were talking about, it'd be really nice to trigger if, if we could set up a GitHub Actions to kick off a Jenkins job, um, like a GitHub Actions on the official Jenkins repo, and whenever they release a release a new a new release of Jenkins, right, have it trigger uh, this build pipeline we have uh, and do the release. So that way, the gap between when um, the Jenkins gets released and when the Docker image gets released is uh, a lot smaller. Um, and, you know, that could be like, hey, let's push it to the unofficial re repository first. Uh, and then one of us could come in, just make sure, hey, it works, you know, make sure it's fine. And then we could easily enough just re-trigger the build, but for the official uh, Docker uh, repository uh, with you guys. That, that's why I had a couple of ideas in mind. Uh, but this whole rework of the whole build pipeline really addresses that. Um, one of the other major changes was uh, instead of building uh, with QMU headers or the QMU emulation, uh, we are building our platform. Um, so this would require a rework of how you guys have it set up in terms of you would need to have access to the architecture. And I did that because uh, QMU emulation uh, isn't 100%. It's pretty good. Uh, but there are some, I've seen some handy, uh, some issues uh, prop up on S390. Uh, and I think Power has some issues once in a while when you're doing like a lot of low level, like C code or something like that with a uh, QMU emulation, it sometimes doesn't 100% emulate it perfectly. Um, so now when with this requirement to build on architecture, what, mm -hmm. are all, what are our alternatives to do that build on architecture? So. I, I know we could borrow from the the, the organizations that have, mm -hmm. there's one, if I remember right, in Oregon that, that offers yep. hosting. What are some of the mm -hmm. other alternatives? Did, I, did GitHub Actions provide multi-architecture for us already or no? What? No, that, it, the GitHub Actions only supports x86 currently, okay. uh, but they also produce, they, they produce, uh, they support Mac OS and I think, I think my, my, my do ARM, but the thing is, for Docker builds, it's just x86 right now. Um, so the, there are other build pipelines. I haven't looked into it all that much. Uh, but what I'm, I was working with Git, a uh, large foil, uh, file system, uh, and they're using GitHub Actions. Um, and uh, the limitation right now is only x86 on Docker builds. Um, Got it. OK, good. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So, but this one, this one is the change from QAMU to building on on the actual architecture mm -hmm. to me that seems like a positive just in terms of reliability yes. much as i love emulators native uh, building on the actual architecture seems more likely to be successful so okay good continue yeah. it, and um for that i uh, we you do have an arch flag passed into the whole scripts so if you have existing x86 architecture um, you can just pass in, you know, the AMD 64 tag and it just builds that one. Uh, you know, if you had like, and then I was thinking like, you know, if you have a Jenkins agent on S390 cluster, right, you could deploy workloads with the S390 tag and stuff like that. Uh, this is how I was similar doing it, it with the example. I, I think I showed you in Travis, they had support for multi-arch. Um, I was just doing that more as like a public demo for you guys to see, hey, what, what, what's the possibilities of it? Um, right. No more use of Docker token. Um, so I guess you guys were using some sort of, you guys generated like an authentication token. Uh, and I got rid of the uh, need of that because we're using the Docker manifest command um, where you don't need to generate any token, anything like that um, to make any of the calls. Cause right before what was happening was you're hitting the manifest API, I think, and trying to grab a bunch of stuff. Um, and I switch over to Docker manifest command, which limits the need for that. Uh, a, it makes it a little more simpler. And then the only credentials you need, and you still needed these before, was uh, Docker login and password uh, to push the images, to publish the images up to it. And you can generate an API key, so it's not like a password password. Okay, so the, the usage of the Docker token was not 
for the push of the image? Mm -mm, no, uh, at least from okay. what I got from it. Great. Okay. Thanks. Um, I added, um, oh, this is, a, this is a nice one. And um, so for Debian tag, um, in the tagging schema you guys had, um, I added a Debian tag. So a lot of yours would be like Jenkins uh, 2.10 uh, Alpine, 2.10 CentOS, right? And there wasn't one for Debian. It was just 2.10, right? Um, I think being a little more verbose and making sure it says Debian, I didn't delete any of the tags. I just added one more tag. The tag alias, if you will, that points back to Debian uh, to make it a little more verbose and for people who uh, are automating things uh, and maybe iterating over that uh, variant or distro, uh, it would be nice to have that. Um, we actually running into a similar issue in Adopt where we just assume the default image is JDK instead of uh, Java runtime environment. Um, and I'm going back with them and be like, hey, you guys need to do verbose tags. Uh, it helps clarify everything. Um, right, and, and that makes sense to me. The, so you, you didn't take away the LTS tag, you just added mm -hmm. one that says, this is LTS on Debian. It, yes. it will point to the same image, I assume, as, or to the same, yeah, to the same yep. SHA-256 yeah, yep. as, as the, the LTS, it's just a, a way for me to be explicit. Yes, I know I'm using Debian and yes. I'll reference it in my from clause. Yep, exactly. Uh, 100%. That's, that's all I did. Um, uh, then I added a .ci folder. Uh, this is what I'm seeing in a lot of like repositories. Uh, I've been working with the open source teams. Uh, basically, um, instead of putting all uh, the CI kind of build uh, pipeline stuff in the main repository, um, you know, main folder, um, you don't want to clutter the main folder. You want to keep that as much as like, hey, here's our build files. Here's the plugin scripts, I guess, which you guys utilize for some of the Docker builds. And <clears throat> here's everything that goes into the Docker containers. Let's move all the CI, CD scripts to a folder. They kind of keep it a little more clean and a little more organized. So I moved the published scripts to a .ci folder. Um, you see this with, you know, .github. Uh, you know, for you know, issuing templates. Um, it's just a common practice, I, I, at least from what I've seen. Um, <clears throat> it doesn't change any functionality. It's just a little cleanup, I guess. Um, I added a force parameter uh, to push the tags uh, and images no matter what. Uh, one of the things was um, when we are pushing, uh, Basically, it build, it, the, the published images builds the images and checks if the tags are up there. Uh, one thing I want to do is say there's a security patch, right? And the tags are up there, right? Saying, hey, there's already an image called, you know, LTS Debian, right? But you just applied a security patch. You want to force that image up there, even though there is a tag already up there with the associated name. So that would just automatically push it no matter what. And, and that, that force parameter goes throughout all the different build scripts. So you, you can have a force parameter set for the build images, force uh, uh, parameter for the uh, build tags, and force parameter for the uh, manifest. So that you're so, always pushing if you have something. Go ahead. So on, I'm, I'm surprised. I would assume there was already something like that because when I run <clears throat> Jenkins slash Jenkins colon LTS, when I ran it three months ago, it was a much older version. So, so mm -hmm. something is updating those tags already. Yep. So, so there is, uh, I forget, I, I would have to look back at my notes when I was in the thick of it, because it is pretty intense build pipeline you guys have. Uh, there is a force parameter already, but I think it was just applying either to tags or images. It didn't necessarily apply just to everything like, Hey, just a manifest. You know what I mean? So if it, if it, maybe the force tag was just for the images, right? But if it saw the same tags there and you really, really, really want to reissue the tags to point to a different images and stuff like that, that wasn't an option. Same thing with manifest. If the, if the manifest needed to be updated, uh, it would just check, Hey, the manifest already exists. Don't, don't go ahead and do it. The force tag wasn't there for those. Um, so I was just kind of making it a little more consistent across everything. Um, Thank you. and giving okay. you guys a little more. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess this is the same thing. Add, add additional checks to make sure images and tags are always up to date. Um, that kind of goes back to, I guess, checking the, the shaws of each images. 
uh, basically saying, comparing, hey, this image I just built, uh, built was SHA, you know, blah, blah, blah. The image already up there is SHA, blah, blah, blah. Are they the same? Are they different? Okay, hey, they're different. Let me push the image because it must have some sort of security patch or it must be newer. Ah, okay, so mm -hmm. this, this additional check would potentially then when, for instance, a Debian operating system patch happens on the base image below us, yes. mm -hmm. this would get us that base image included in a new image and could, if we were using force, I guess, in that case, push that image out. Yes. Even to older exactly. versions. Okay, mm -hmm. got it. And I, I try to add as much checks as possible to basically short circuit things. So like, hey, let's not re, re you know, waste bandwidth and re-push things if it's if the same exact SHAs are up there. But if the SHAs are different, we assume that, hey, it must be new. Uh, and if you have that force tag, it will always push it, even if it's the same or whatever. Um, so I thought that was good. You already had, this, there was some of the checks already in there. I think they were just going back. I think they were just for images, not just tags or uh, manifests. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to be a little more uh, verbose in the checking and uh, save bandwidth and time where I can. Um, okay. The last thing is still an ongoing thing. Um, so Git large uh, file system. Uh, and th this is actually going on to our next agenda point. So I'll keep it brief here. Um, I was using multi-stage build. So I was actually compiling uh, Git a large file uh, system uh, from source and actually copying that binary into uh, the Docker images because they didn't release for S390. They didn't release for power. Um, and I don't think they have an ARM release. Um, so I was just compiling everything from source, which added to a lot to time. Uh, in my update, and I'm actually working with Git large files uh, system uh, on you know fixing things. It, that SGPR I think got closed to add support for S390. Yeah. Um, so I'm actually having an update to this PR uh, coming soon, which added those patches in where it saves time and not needing to build everything again from source. It's just actually pulling from these releases on the GitHub page. Excellent. So, so you've got, where was it? Let's see. So series 390 and mm -hmm. power PC. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So they're already publishing. <clears throat> That's really good. Yes, exactly. And then um, there is a problem with Alpine uh, in terms and I actually have another PR open with him uh, or issue open with him. Uh, and he's already working on a patch. There is a problem with uh, the Alpine variant where um, it uses it's statically linked to uh, glibc. So when you run it on muscle, <coughs> it does not work. Exactly. Um, this is, welcome to the same problem Open JDK has, right? <laughs> yes, Thinking yes. that there is one and only one true C library for a Linux variant when yes. Muscle reminds us there is not just one C library. Yes. So I'm trying to get him to apply a patch for that. Uh, and we'll talk more about that in the second gen because there's, there's some different options we can go down. But this is the general gist of this whole PR. I know we took up a large chunk of time on this, um, but it is a a good rework of a lot of things. And this is just the experimental images. This is nothing to impact the official pipeline uh, you guys have for the official images. This is just your guys' uh, Jenkins, I think CI uh, repository on Docker Hub. Um, so, you know, it does not affect the main one. Uh, I wanted to test how this, you know, ran on the official ones before we made any big changes to the official. Right. So, well, and, and that's, that's great, thank you. So this this looks like it looks like the next steps then for us are to to needs more review. Let me yes. get some notes here. So yeah, I would love. I'm sure I'm not a bash wizard by any means, and there was a lot of bash. Uh, so wherever help and review is, you know, wherever we can get help and review would be great. And this is into the experimental. Um, yes experimental repo so that we can do further tests it will also then need it also needs ci infra for yes. s390 x and for ppc 64 le probably arm in there too oh and for arm okay yeah. um right and so that needs discussion with the the infra team yes 
and I did keep the old experimental uh, script in there. Uh, that way, uh, you know, you, you could still operate as business as usual, but we could hook in this uh, whole uh, second, you know, experimental uh, pipeline in uh, just to, you know, compare and contrast and also just to keep things working how they are right now. Um, I thought that might be an easier transition. Good. Very good. Thank you. All right. Anything else on that topic before we move to Git LFS? Nope. That's about okay. it. So let's take up that Git LFS topic since I, I care deeply about Git. So now you're going yeah. to talk about things I'm really deeply, profoundly yeah. interested yes. in. Go ahead, Sweet. Jim. So in, in my in talking with the maintainers of uh, Git LFS, uh, um, they, so we, one of the big issues right now, I got the building for Z and you got a build from power. Uh, so the binaries are up there. Uh, one thing you guys were doing is pulling from, uh, I guess they're the most recent change to those images uh, or all the images is pulling from package cloud.io, uh, which is where they officially release their um, images, uh, or sorry, uh, binaries for Debian. And I think also Yum, they have a Yum repository or RPM, right? Um, they do not, package.cloud.io uh, does not support uh, apt. So a a APK, uh, so it does not support Alpine. Um, and that's nothing Git uh, can do. Uh, it's just package IO, uh, package cloud IO. Um, so uh, in, in terms of that, right, one, one of the questions I had to you was um, when building from it, and, and my PR I have open right now, and I'm about to push in some of the changes I've been working on, is I've been actually pulling from the GitHub releases on all the experimental images, um, <clears throat> excuse me, to make it more uniformed in terms of, um, you know, hey, just one Docker file, we don't have to, you know, have one for, um, you know, power, you know, or one for S390. The big thing with, package cloud.io and the reason why um, I, 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 we're not pulling from there is because right now their GitHub actions is what feeds into cloud uh, package cloud.io and they do not support S390 or ARM or power right now. It's only x86. So the, it, the binaries that get pushed up to package.cloud.io are only for x86. So hence my um, kind of hesitation and why I went down the path of pulling from the GitHub releases um, as you know, I have it like kind of in like a, like a variable substitution. So hey, detect what architecture you're pulling from, right? And go get uh, like the S390 binary, go get the, um, go get the AMD 64 binary from the GitHub releases page because it does support every single platform and we don't need five different Docker containers just to support all the arches. Um, and that but, seems very reasonable yeah. to me. The okay. only reason we used Package Cloud <clears throat> was because yeah. it was a documented technique yes. from, the, from the Git LFS project. So Git, pulling from GitHub releases sounds even better than using Package Cloud. So that's, that's as one of the people who was deeply involved in, the, in getting in having Git LFS included in the images at all, mm -hmm. um, I have no problem with that proposal. That sounds great. It's okay. no no dispute for me. It it won't be quite as easy, I assume, in the script. Although that that horrible script that we or horrible is the wrong way to say it. That piece of script code that we copied and pasted from Package Cloud IO will have to have a different script that that copies from, from GitHub releases, yep. but you've already yep. got that, right? Yes. Yeah, I already have it and I modeled it after your uh, uh, tiny init um, uh, kind of um, poll where you guys oh. are pulling tiny or T, t I don't know, how, is it, is it tiny, it's tiny init, <laughs> you, you, you said it right, yeah. Yeah, um, I, I did it like that because you are pulling from the GitHub releases for that. You guys are verifying the, the signature file and I went through the whole process uh, of that I actually talked with the developer um, of Git, um, and uh, he actually is documenting how to verify binaries because uh, it was a little confusing in terms of um, it's a signed hash. So 
and it's not just one signed hash it's shined hashes for all the different binaries so you actually have to verify the ha uh, verify the signature with um gpg uh and then cat out the sha for whatever architecture you are on and then do sha 256 sum uh just to make sure to verify it just just to make sure that hey the whatever we are downloading actually is the correct fact the correct file in case some malicious actor did come in somehow and get access to the repository right um, and that that's that's a really healthy process that we certainly yes. wouldn't want to Skip, risk yeah. having somebody supply chain contaminate us yes by mm -hmm. putting in a bad a, a hacked version of git lfs great yeah. okay so the only the only sore thumb or the thing that kind of sticks out is alpine right now so Alpine, uh, since the they have a binary for Linux, you know AMD 64, Linux, you know S390, right? They're all built like we talked about against uh, uh, glibc. Uh, the creator does have a PR open, uh, and I was actually working on him at about like five o'clock last night uh, on doing it. And I think he obviously he's maybe in a different time zone or whatever, but he it looked like he got off for tonight. Um, so the PR is open. I think it's going through their CI, CD pipeline, checking and verifying things. But that patch should make it um, not care what um, C compiler it's attached to. Um, so that would be good in terms of um, right now for Alpine, I'm actually just pulling from the Alpine release package of Git uh, LFS, um, which is good, but it's not maintained by them at all it's some some other guy i guess heavily involved in the alpine community um and they also lag behind in terms of versions right now the version there they have is 2.9.2 uh which is one version behind the newest release is 2.10 uh 2.10 is an alpine experimental or edge edge uh, which ideally isn't the best to pull from and enabling that in the Docker container is um, not great. Um, so hopefully with the Alpine PR, um, we do get it uh, supported in terms of the binary. So then we can just do the exact same methodology. We're doing, hey, let's curl down the binary, curl down the signature file, verify it, install it, and we'll be good. Um, yeah, that, that's that's basically Alpine's the sore thumb here in terms of it's not great. Um, so, um, but yeah, like you said, the, the current workaround could be just the the package they provide, or not they provide, but the Alpine provides. Um, yeah, so that's a whole big mess I've been dealing with. <laughs> Excellent. Well, that and that's that's marvelously marvelously progressing. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. Yeah. Uh, and that will be pulled into the PR uh, you saw with the, the parallel scripts and stuff like that. Um, I just need to push the uh, changes I made into that branch uh, of the PR. Um, so that way um, it, it gets added because it doesn't really change anything. It just changes how we are installing Git uh, LFS. So. Super. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So. It looks like we've got we've got. I'm going to capture some some additional action items then mm -hmm. into the the action item list here. So one is Mark um, and Jim. Actually, maybe we put it on you, Jim. I'm going to phrase it this way: Jim, begin infra discussions for agents agents to run. PPC 64LE and S390X in Docker build process mm -hmm. or for experimental images first, right? I mean, yes, the, the first is this is let's just get it into experimental images and see. Yeah. And I, I had a proof of concept working where uh, I had my own Docker hub up and I pushed all the images uh, to it. Um, and it, it worked fine. So, uh, I mean, I don't think it hopefully will be that much work uh, getting integrated. Um, right. Is the Jenka, Jenkins infra team a different glitter chat uh, or something? It, it is. I'll, and so I'll let me just embed here the, the link to it so that it's actually a mailing list. 
let's go grab it real quickly here. And so community infra, no sub projects, infra and mailing list should be this. And here we go, Jenkins infra, nope, that's the old list. Let's go grab that and look at the archive where it will tell us where the new list is. Mailing list migration move, here we go. So this is the new list and I'll embed this link into it. Awesome, thank you so much. So if you just wanna send email to that list, you can get the discussion started. Be sure you're clear in that email that the initial proposal is just- Just for experimental. Exactly, because there is a, a if I understand correctly, there's a different process for official builds and eventually we'll have to deal with it for official builds, but this is a this is experimental stage first. Yep. Okay, good, all right. And I had started those discussions some time ago, but did not drive them to conclusion. So that's, that's a, a yes, we need to do it. Okay, excellent. Then, um, oh, then we've got, we need, need reviews, review the Docker build rework PR. And that one, you had this right here, right? Give me that URL, copy that link. Okay. And that is really Mark, Oleg, uh, Alex, and Jim, review and discuss. Good, okay. Uh, the only other question I had, uh, maybe it's for you, or maybe I go back to the get, uh, get all L L L LFS uh, creator, is on some of the images, um, and maybe it's because the command you copy, copy and pasted for the you know, package IO, you guys are installing git uh, LFS, and then doing git uh, uh, LFS install. So it looks like you're initializing, um, I, I guess, like the, the, the git uh, LFS, like daemon or config files or something like that. It's, uh, yeah, I, it's not a daemon, it's just a config file creation. Okay, yeah. okay. So the question is on some of the images we aren't, notably Al Alpine is not calling that install. Um, additionally, is it's, it's calling the install on the root user, right? But then we make a Jenkins user and switch to that uh, in that user space. Um, is a is the git uh you know lfs install uh needed uh in terms of you know like alpine seems to function fine uh and then b is it smart to have it uh do the initialize on the root user or jenkins user um, so I, I thought it was needed on both but let's put an action item there so that's probably one mark actually let's put it on you yeah, I can, I can yeah. follow back up with the, the career. Jim or Research, the, the is, if git LFS install is actually a requirement. Yeah, so I, I never used git LFS before, so um, still relatively new in terms of that. So I didn't know if you have prior knowledge, but I can just go back to the maintainer. Uh, yeah, he seems pretty active, so. The, the, all I, I can tell you is, in my case, it's it's cargo cult, meaning I learned to do it long ago and I don't bother even thinking about it now. I make sure I do it at least once every time I yeah. when I mm -hmm. when I'm in a new machine. And okay. but is it really needed? I have no idea. It could be okay. that that is <laughs> just entirely me having developed a condition uh, yes. response. Oh, yes, you need to do Git LFS install, but it yeah. may no longer be required at all. Okay. Yep. That's that's something I can do as an action item to to go get that. Um, Great. Uh, completed. Oops, let me get that. Grab that. Whoops. Excellent. Okay. Good. I'll put that into the action items as well. Then. Super. Thank you. All right. Anything else on Git LFS, Jim? Nope. That's it. I I know I spieled a lot. So. Hey, thank you for thank you for that great great results on your time, and thank you very much for your ongoing contribution. This is really no cool. problem. 
Uh, it's the DOF contribution is going well too. They um, we're, we're pushing forwards with that. I actually we redid their whole test framework, uh, and now they we just need to hook it into the Jenkins pipeline. But we can test pretty much for any of the variants, uh, any of the base uh, images. Uh, so hopefully, coming up soon, we'll see uh, more of the the variants being pushed into the official images for adopt OpenJDA. Uh, which would be one 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 step closer to becoming, you know, actually starting the discussion for Jenkins and actually looking into switching to adopt. Um, but it's it's been a little it's a little slow progress over there. It's it's I don't know that much side you know I don't know that much uh, Java development side of things. So I'm running all these <laughs> workloads and I'm like I don't know I used Maven once, but that's about it. So it's. <laughs> I'm diving in deep without uh, kind of knowing what I'm looking at. So, welcome to the world of open source. That's we <laughs> bold we boldly go where where angels fear to tread. Well done. That's great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks very much. So, um, I'm gonna just a brief comment on the Fosdem notes. I had good conversations with uh, several uh, platform and operating system vendors that or platform and operating system teams uh, that were at FOSDEM in Belgium. Uh, for instance, the things that, that were interesting to me were, let's see, I talked with the CentOS people about how getting an AWS image and they are working on creating one. Sweet. Uh, so it was, it, that was been one where I've had to do my testing with images that I found and got lucky on because there isn't an official one. They said, yeah, we know that. I talked to the FreeBSD people about um, uh, for AWS image availability. And yes, they are available so that I can do more platform testing on FreeBSD using AWS images. Uh, talk to the OpenSUSE team um, uh, about their use of the ButterFS or BetterFS, I'm not sure how mm -hmm. it's pronounced, BTRFS um, as a, um, what would you call it, a, a log, log formatted uh, file system, meaning I can do snapshots. Yep. And, I've, I've been, uh, go ahead. I've been running a ZFS for a lot of my stuff, but uh, I know Butter uh, has some advantages uh, to it. Well, and, and that's that you you make a good point on the free. One of the things that I was worrying about in having this conversation with them is how do we describe backup for a Jenkins user and a mm -hmm. Jenkins user that's on a, a ZFS capable file system should just use snapshots, right? Yeah. I mean, they should not waste their time creating a file system backup when they've got snapshots built into the operating systems. Yeah, 100%. And, and likewise, and I confirmed with the, uh, the ButterFS people in OpenSUSE that they agreed uh, snapshots for backup is the is absolutely what they would recommend as well, right? It's mm -hmm. it's their preferred way of doing it. They've got a concept of of doing like ZFS has with where you can ship a snapshot to another machine, mm -hmm. and so so good good progress there. Um, that's those were the key results for me. For oh oh, and I had a conversation with with uh, Jim Klimov um, about Jenkins specific knowledge of ZFS. There are some, because Jenkins was initially created long ago at Sun, uh, it actually has some very specific knowledge about how to use ZFS very, very well. Interesting. But it's outdated because it hasn't been touched in a very long time and because the Solaris variants that on which it was based so so needs needs more work but uh, is known to work with ZFS using I think it's called live ZFS native so those those things are there and platform interesting that's all that I had from Fosdem. Uh, well, I wish I wish uh, I, I mentioned this too late to the to uh, some of the adopt team that went. They had a booth at uh, at Fosdem. I was hoping oh. I was like, oh, 
hey, like, are you guys don't, you know, see, uh, maybe you guys can meet some of the Jenkins team members. But I don't, and, I don't think they got around to it. So. Well, I got, I was pointed to them. I, I'm embarrassed that I missed them. I was pointed mm-hmm. to them by a colleague. Oleg pointed me to him and said, hey, Mark, the adopt people are here. Go talk to them. Unfortunately, he noted it on Sunday. Mm-hmm. And the adopt team was only there on Saturday. So I missed them. Yes. But, yeah, yeah. But <clears throat> we will get them next year. It's, it's reminded me that when I go to these kind of conferences, so I'll be at scale in Los Angeles in March, awesome. for instance. I'm going to go looking for other projects to be sure I have those conversations. Yeah, no, I, I mentioned it to Shelly, which is one of the, I think the leads there. She's the woman I've been working with at the adopt um, team. And she, I saw you joined the whole adopt uh, Slack channel too, um, right. which seems, seems pretty good. She's pretty active. That's actually how I've been communicating a lot with the adopt team. Um, and we actually do have weekly meetings now or, bi-weekly meetings uh, okay. on Wednesdays yeah um I can get you that link if you want um uh but yeah I, w- I wish you guys met up that would have been a cool fusion of two two worlds I've been working on so um excellent thank you Jim no I think that covers the topics that I had and we've we've sort of hit our time anything yep. else that needs to go on the list for today nope thank you for letting me talk I, I know sometimes I ramble a little bit so much appreciated. Thanks very much. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording and and we'll call this meeting done. Thanks very, very much, Jim. Thank you, Mark. Catch you guys later. See ya.